Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Easy PLC Machine Editor Design a Simulation. Easy PLC comes with many pre-built machines for you to develop your programming logic. This can be modified or custom machines can be programmed using the Machine Editor. The Machine Editor comes as a standard feature of the Easy PLC software suite. The Easy PLC Machine Simulator Editor is an easy to use tool enabling you to easily create medium, easy or complex mechanical systems. These machines systems can include assembled mechanically, electrical and electronic components. If your components you need are unavailable in the library, you can use the components editor to create your mechanisms and devices. These machines help you to enhance your PLC programming skills. You can also replicate real physical systems to be programmed virtually and avoid damaging the existing system. Alternatively, you can start programming and verifying your program before making the machine. Now Easy PLC comes with over 40 pre-built machines. We will be using the machine simulator editor to create a new mixing uh, machine and we will include a tank, control panel and operation indication. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. The Easy PLC Simulator offers a virtual 3D world with real-time graphics and physical properties where you can test your PLC programs. You can create your machines or use some of the different predefined machines. Start the Machine Simulator software. Select the Options icon on the main menu. This will be used to set the options for your machine simulator and editor. Resolution and volume are just a couple of the items that you may want to change based on your current system. Select editor from the main menu. This machine simulator window presents you with three different backgrounds. The machine editor, as previously mentioned, will modify the existing pre-built machines where you can start a new machine. Select the Factory 1 Editor. The Machine Simulator window for the editor has an excellent graphical user interface. The editor menu consists of the main menu across the top of the screen. It includes the File, Tools, UDC, and Simulation sections. This will allow you to work with the entire machine. The remaining screen is broken down into four areas. The center of the screen will show you the current machine and background settings. This will represent how and where the machine will be displayed. The hierarchy will show you the components displayed in the center of the screen. It is in the top left of the screen. This is a list of the items that can be selected and properties changed. You can also add and delete from this section. Tools will allow you to select items in a, in a library and add to the hierarchy. This is where you will choose the machine and components to use on your custom machine. Characteristics and functionality can be selected for each of the components. The properties menu will be displayed once an element is selected. This will appear on the right of the screen. A click can choose the item from where it is in the center area a selection from the hierarchy or the tools area. Select the necessary components from the machine simulator editor library to build your machine. In the editor library you will find different types of sensors and actuators such as photocells, inductive switches, electric motors, transporter trays, elevators and more. In our example, we will be adding a built-in system and we will select the liquid tank and this will load this onto our scene, here it is, and we can position it with our mouse and then right click and it will put it on to the screen itself. You can see now that we have our handles here that we can actually move this machine left, we can move it up and down and we can move it backwards and forwards. 
So we'll just lower that down again. So what I'm doing is just clicking and then dragging that down to where I want it positioned. So right there looks pretty good. And you'll notice here over here we have our tank. So let's put a uh, LED light here. So let's just go and find that in our components. Under buttons and switches, we'll put this LED to indicate a running light. And you see it will put this onto the screen here. And once again, we can position it where we want onto our panel. And we will just move that over. Oh, there we go. If we ever lose it, we can always go back and hit the MS button that we just had here. And then we can actually move that, that unit over. So we want it onto our box and we will just move it forward a bit and over and some forward again. And you can see it will disappear in behind a box, but we want it just onto the box. So right about there. And what we will do is go over to our properties window here and we will select um, the button label. We'll select rectangular. So now you can see that on there. We'll select the label for that button and we'll just call this running. And for a description, this is actually what will happen or what will be on to our hierarchy here. You see MS button one. We'll just put uh, run LED. There we go. And that is our button. And if we want, we can always zoom in you, and you can we use the scroll mouse wheel. And if you hit and hold the scroll mouse wheel and move it over, you can see that it will move it over. So there is our button that we just put in. We'll just back that up a little bit so we can see the whole scene. Next, what we'll do is add a control panel to our tank. So if we go down further, you will see that we'll have buttons on our user defined components. And we have a cabinet push button panel. We'll just add that. And we will position it oh, right about there. Again, we can move it up and down, um, backwards, and side to side. So we'll position it right about there. So that are, that's all of our components that we're gonna add to our uh, machine. Assigning addresses can be done under the properties window. So we will select our cabinet push button first, and then you will see we have our digital inputs located right here. And we have three different digital inputs. We have the start, stop, and emergency uh, button. We will hit the three dots from the right-hand side for our start, and we will assign input zero to that. Then we will assign our stop input two and our emergency button for input two. So we have zero, one, and two for the digital inputs. Our digital outputs are selected here and we have the start light and the stop light. We can select that and we'll do output zero for the first one and then out the stop light output number one. You can see we're just going in sequential order here. Our next component is our run LED and on it we have our PLC in and then we have an output light. So we don't have really any in that we want on that. We just want our output light. So again, we'll hit those three dots and we will assign this under our stop light here. So our output number two. So we have these first two components complete now. So let's go to the tank and on the tank we have our PLC output input valve. And we will go output number two, or output number three now, under our run LED light. Then we have our PLC out uh, valve. And we will assign that to output four. Our, our analog output, we will do the first one here, output zero. And then our analog output, another analog output valve, one. And then we have our PLC, the level analog, and we'll go input zero. And our PLC analog flow valve, 
which is, again is analog and that'll be input number one. So that is the assigning of our addresses to our new machine. Now with our addresses assigned, we can now run our simulation. So if we look under the simulation, we can hit start machine, or we can just hit this play button on our main menu here. Once we do, we can now see our inputs and outputs, and we will just move this over so we can um, see the, the actual unit better. There we go. And you can see if I hit the start, you can see my cabinet push button start. There's my stop my e-stop so that all seems to be working correctly and if I look at my outputs here you can see my start light there we go my stop light and then my run light I can have that all on then you can see my tank bell I can start filling it up and if I look at my analog inputs you can see that uh, level is now indicating we can turn on the output bell and you can see the flow output and then our our analog output value output values are right here so everything seems to be working as we expected so that is our running and we can look at all of those different options that we want and this is this is now we can connect our um, PLC controller up to, to actually simulate this and actually run it so when I hit the start it starts filling up etc. Now we have to save this simulation. Saving the machine, first of all we have to stop the simulation. We'll use the stop button here. And then what we have to do is we'll go into the machine itself on our hierarchy and select it. We will call this machine uh, mixing tank and earth or the author we'll just put ACC automation and our description we can put a full length description of what this actually is but what we'll do is we'll just say machine uh, simulator editor so that is our properties that we have for this machine and we will go up here and we'll hit file and we will hit save and what it will do is it will tell us here that we have our mixing tank and you'll see it goes into our machine file and we'll just hit save and these are a list of all the other machines that are already pre-built for us so we'll hit save here there we go so now our machine saved as a mixing tank. Now the other thing we'll do is actually add a picture uh, for this tank itself. So again, let's go back and uh, start our simulation. And what we will do is actually uh, turn on our start light. We'll turn on our LED light on our actual tank itself. And we will put on our um, input valve and we'll just let that fill up. We'll move this out of the way so we can have more of the um, scene itself. And in Windows, if we hit the control print screen, we get the entire view. If we hit Alt and print screen, we get the active window that we're looking at and it copies it to the clipboard. So we did that already. And then we go into paint. And in paint, what we can do is now paste this um, that we had in and when we paste it in you will see the representation of our tank itself so what we'll do is actually um, then copy that and we'll use this part of it and we'll just hit copy we'll do a new and we'll paste that in so that is our picture of our tank. And then what we'll do is save that as mixing tank. So file, save as, and we save it right into our machine file here.
There we go. So there's our mixing tank picture. So now we can close that down. Pause minimize it. And we can actually stop our simulation. And we will actually exit now out of our machine simulator. And when we do, we can now go into our machines. And when we scroll down, we should be able to see our mixing tank, which is right here. So if we call that up and we hit start, we will be all set in order to actually control now our mixing tank. Just be a second here to load it up. There we go. And there is our mixing tank itself. We can view our IO and we will just zoom in on this. And just like we did before, there's our run LED light, our, our start, and we can actually start filling. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.